Identifying linear functions. Our objective is to identify linear functions and linear equations, as well as graph linear functions that represent real-world situations and give their domain and range. Why learn this? Linear functions can describe many real-world situations, such as distances traveled at a constant speed. A linear function is a graph that forms a straight line. A linear equation is any equation that can be written in standard form. The standard form of a linear equation is when you have ax plus by equaling c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, so all the kinds of numbers that we've been working with, and a and b are not both zero. One of them could be, but not both of them. So let's try identifying a linear function by its graph. Identify whether each graph represents a function. Explain. If the graph does represent a function, is the function linear? Alright, so let's start with A. We're looking at, is it a function? Step 1. Well, it's a function because each domain is paired with exactly one range. So, yes, it's a function. But the question is, is it a linear function? Well, does the graph form a line? Yes, so it is a linear function. Let's look at B. Is B a function? Well, yes. Each domain is paired with exactly one range, meaning for every x value, you only get one y output. So, yes, it's a function. And the next question is, well, is it a linear function? Well, it doesn't form a straight line, so no. It's not a linear function. All right, numbers or letter C. Well, step one is the graph a function, or does the graph represent a function to be more correct? No. For the domain value 3, you have multiple y values from that domain. So it's not a function. So just because it looks like a line because it's vertical, it doesn't mean it's a linear function. It has to be a function first. You can sometimes identify a linear function by looking at a table or list of ordered pairs. In a linear function, a constant change in x corresponds to a constant change in y. So let's look at what that means. So in the x table, in the x column here in this table, we go up 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. And then in the y, we go minus 3, minus 3, minus 3, minus 3. What happens is that makes it a line. On the right, we have plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. That sounds great. But then when we go to the y, we have minus 3, minus 1, plus 1, plus 3. These are not the same, which causes the function to no longer be linear. So let's look at identifying a linear function by using ordered pairs. Tell whether each set of ordered pairs satisfies a linear function. So let's start with from 2 to 5, we're going up plus 3, and then plus 3, and plus 3. So our x values are going up by the same amount. And now let's look at our y values. So from 4 to 3, we're going down 1 and then down one again, and down one again. So in this case, 
These points do satisfy a linear function. If you need to, you can always put it as a table. Sometimes you can just do it with the list of ordered pairs. Let's try another one. So we go from negative 10 to negative 5 to 0 to 5. So we're going to add 5 each time for our x. So now let's look at our y's. So from 10 to 4, we went down 6. Then from 4 to 2, we went down 2, and then down 2. So these points do not satisfy a linear function. These have to change at the same rate. Now let's look at the standard form of a linear equation. Notice that when a linear equation is written in standard form, x and, b, x and y both have exponents of 1. x and y are not multiplied together, and x and y do not appear in denominators, exponents, or radical signs, so those square root signs. So let's look here. You have 3x plus 2y equals 10. It looks just like standard form. The x and y, they're separated by either addition or subtraction. There's no powers. And if you look at the second one, you can rewrite it into standard form. And same with the last one. But now let's look at what's not linear. We have 3xy. We're multiplying the x and y together, so it makes it not a linear function. In this one, we have an exponent. That makes it not linear. And then on this last one here, you have a variable in the denominator, which makes it not linear as well. So once again, for something to be linear, the x and y both have exponents of 1, meaning they're not to the power of 2 or 3 or 20. x and y are not multiplied together like they are here, and x and y are not in the denominator, exponents, or underneath radical signs. So they're not down here like this. So let's graph linear functions. Tell whether each function is linear. If so, we'll graph the function. All right, so let's start with this first one. We have y equals x plus 3. Let's first see if we can write it in standard form. If we can write it in standard form, then we know it's going to be linear. So we need to subtract x from both sides, because in standard form, the x and the y are on the same side. So now we have y minus x equaling 3. So yes, we can write it in standard form. If you need to, you can also represent the x first by going negative x plus y equals 3. Either way, you should be able to tell that it's, it can be, it's in standard form. So therefore, we can graph this. So let's make a quick table. So we have x, and then we have our output y. So what if we use 0, 1, and 2? So if we plug in 0, we end up with 3. If we plug in 1, we end up with 4. And 2, we end up with 5. So now let's graph it. So we have 0, 3, 1, 4, and 2, 5. And then we can make a line. Alright, so now let's look at b. We have y equals x squared. Well, x is squared, so therefore it's not linear. And now let's look at a career application. Sue rents a manicure station in a salon and pays the salon owner $5.50 for each manicure she gives. The amount Sue pays each day is given by f of x equals 5.50 or 5.5 x, where x is the number of manicures. Let's graph this function and then we're going to give its domain and range. So let's start by making a table. So we're going to have our x values and our function. 
So when we plug in 0, we're going to end up with 0. 1 would be 550, 2 would be 11, 3 would be 1650, and 4 times 550 gives us $22, and 5 times $5.50 gives us $27.50. Well, now we can graph. All right, we have one less, one more step. Graph the function and give its domain and range. So we need to give the domain and range. So for the domain, we're going to use D. Our domain is going to be things like zero, 1, 2, 3, and then it can keep going. Depends on how many manicures are done. And then the range is going to start at 0, and the next one it's going to be 550, then 11, and then that's going to keep going. And that ends our lesson on identifying linear functions.